Hello YouTube, how's it going? It's a professional here. So today I want to do a little bit of a different video. I wanted to do a video where I would talk specifically about the strange man in Red Dead Redemption. And this is an, in anticipation for Red Dead Redemption 2 that is coming out next year. And since this is a Rockstar title, this is related to my channel. So I really wanted to do a discussion video about this. And this, the reason I wanted to do a video about this guy is because this is the creepiest character in a Rockstar title I've ever encountered in my opinion. Even creepier than all the strangers that I've met in, in Grand Theft Auto. And this, um, uh, this is still debated seven years later, seven years after the game came out, people are still arguing over the identity of the strange man, who this guy exactly is. I think that I figured it out. I don't think that this answer is ever going to really be solved. I don't think we're ever going to really know the answer to this question. It's just basically all based off theory, all based on what you think of him, who you think he is. But I think that I pretty much figured it out. And for people who want to still play Red Dead Redemption before Red Dead Redemption 2 comes out, I suggest you do not watch this video because there's major spoilers in this video. I'm going to be the discussing major events in the game so if you don't want spoilers do not watch this video if you don't mind spoilers here you go now for people unaware of the strange man you meet him very the same way you do in a gta title you meet him just like the strangers and freaks you meet him in three locations you meet him in the west you meet him in mexico and then you meet him um in beecher's hope right where john marston's ranch is the main character and this guy gives you a bunch of strange tasks and the thing is about him is that there's something wrong with him um, exactly and he is not normal and people don't know who or what he is in fact exactly but I think I've managed to finally piece it together so right here let me explain for you guys who he is. Now, if you guys do not want to watch the intro cutscene with him, you've already, you already seen the cutscenes and just want to get straight down to the theories, in the description down below, I put it um, to the moment uh, when I start talking about the theories exactly. Now, I am warning people, I am going to be discussing a lot of religious elements in this, and I don't have any affiliation with any um, any of these religions. I am just going to be um, discussing it because it basically suits the theory a lot, and it's ne necessary for to explain in the video. So I just wanted to give people a heads up. There will be a lot of um, religious discussion later in this video so that people don't get uncomfortable. Now then, let's move on to the video here. Let's watch the cutscenes with this guy and the tasks he gives you. Hello, John. John Marston. Do I know you? I hope so. I seem to know you. I'm pretty good at remembering faces. Are you? Do you remember Hattie McCourt's face? Who? She was a girl Dutch Vanderlyn shot in the head on that raid on the ferry a few years back. Same one you got shot on. Pretty girl, until her eye was hanging out by a thread of tendon and her brain was plastered over a wall. Not really. Then why would you remember me, friend? You've forgotten far more important people than me. What's your game, friend? I don't have a game, John. Listen. Sometimes, I just wish I'd known more about life. Wish I'd had better guidance. A friend of mine is drunk as a skunk in the saloon on Thieves Landing. I think he's going to be unfaithful to his dear wife. Why don't you head over there and see if you can advise him how best to proceed? What do you think I am? I know what you are, John. Just if you've got the time, friend. No problem if I just... <clears throat> Excuse me, mister. Yeah, what the hell do you want? Look, don't ask how, but I know what you're about to do. You don't want to do this. The hell are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about, mister. I'm just here to say I don't think you should go through with it. Your wife, she loves you. Shit, mister. I don't know who or what you are, but I guess I'm grateful. I guess you're right. I was raised better than this. Don't mention it. Go on now. Welcome to Nuevo Pariso, John. Where do I know you from? You're famous, John. You're the man who shot a bunch of banditos as soon as he turned up in this country. You're a man who decided right and wrong between a man and death, between a man and his wife. And who are you? You know, I admire you, John. I hope my boy turns out just like you. <laughs> For your sake, I hope he don't. You kill people so easily, yet you respect the vows of marriage. That's very curious. 
I'll let the appropriate authorities judge my morality, friend. Yes, you will. And they shall. Anyway, I hear that an old nun is traveling from the monastery, taking the money she raised to the bank. Why don't you head up there and see if you can lend her a hand? Road's full of thieves. Either that or rob her yourself. I'll see you around, John. I hope you don't. Arms for the poor! Uh, oh, sir. Could you find it in your heart to donate some money for the poor? Perhaps cast a little sunlight into their lives? Well, maybe, but ain't it the Lord's responsibility to look over his flock? Not mine? Yes. But the Lord has brought you to me so you could help me. They're at their wit's end, and their faith has been cast aside. All it would take is a few dollars to get them started on the right path so they could see there are those who care. A few dollars to completely restore someone's faith? I never knew life is so simple. There you are, sister. Yes. Life is much simpler than we make it. Gracias, señor. And God bless you. Ain't this a beautiful spot? Sure. What are you doing here? My accounts. I'm an accountant. Is that so? In a way. What's your name? You know, it's the darndest thing I can't remember. Tell me your damn name and where you know me from. Well, I know you're from Mexico. I know you're from back out west. Hell, I know you from all over. Tell me your name or I won't be responsible for my actions. Oh, but you will. You will be responsible. This is a fine spot. See you around, cowboy. Damn you! Yes, many have. And here we have theory number one. He is John's conscience, a hallucination. The idea of this th theory is that he is a hallucination. He's not real. The strange man is only imagined in the mind of John. And he's John's conscience coming back to haunt him after all these years and the crimes and the murders and the robberies, etc. that he's committed. He is his conscience testing him to see if he's doing the right thing or the wrong thing. Now this theory falls apart, falls apart easily at the beginning right here. Now... The idea of a hallucination is that it's not real, it's fake, it's a figment of John's imagination, and meanwhile the hallucination is warning us about events that are going to happen, so somehow a hallucination manages to know about things that are going to happen, it has, it has us interact with real world events, so Are the idea of this being a hallucination, a figment of John's mind, space. is wrong. There's no way that a hallucination would know about things going Dutch on, like this guy cheating on his head, wife, right on and the, the nun in the other scene um, collecting money Same for the poor. In addition, um, the strange man mentions the girl that got shot by Dutch in the head, and John does not seem to know her. Now, John, uh, you would think that, that John would be able to remember her, but how would a hallucination be able to remember that? So, um, the idea that this is a hallucination? Wrong. Okay, so here we have theory number two. He is a ghost, one of John's victims, one of the people that his John has killed in the past when he was an outlaw. Now, this theory has more weight behind it than the other one, and the idea of it is again, when he says you have forgotten more important people than me, people seem to, a lot of people seem to think that he's a ghost of one of John's former victims. However, this theory um, can be proven easily, uh, easily wrong, in my opinion, with next with the next clip that we are going to be showing up. In the, in the same clip where he gets, where John shoots him, he says, he says, many have damned me. And the idea that somebody would, he was a normal person before he was a ghost, that people were damning him, no, wrong. And number two is, when he tells John that, you know, I can't remember my name, I don't know my name, that, um, that alone is, at least he would tell, at least he would tell John is, you know, you killed me on this day, and this happened. But he doesn't. 
he's just very he's just very silent about the issue. He and in the previous clips when John asks him who he is, he just seems to ignore it. But now he finally just comes out and he says, you know, I don't even remember. I don't know who I am. So the idea that he is one of John's victims in the past, no, he's not a ghost. Your name or I won't be responsible for my actions. Damn you! Yes, many have. <laughs> Now, theory number three, he is Death or the Grim Reaper. Now, the idea here is obviously that he's wearing black. And the second thing is, as you guys see in this clip, when he tells John, this is a nice spot, you know, major spoilers ahead, that is the place where John is buried. When John later dies at the end of the game, he is buried in the exact spot where he is talking to the mysterious stranger, the strange man. So the, the area where he's buried on, that's where he's having the discussion with the stranger. The stranger standing right on top of it and he's saying, um, this is a nice spot. So implying that he knows what's going to happen, that John is going to die, and that he is going to be buried right there. Now, this theory falls apart quickly again. Now, we had evidence behind it that he's standing hes standing on the spot where John's grave is going to be, yes. And he's wearing black, but black, that's really, a, this is more of a symbolic thing, small little detail. But, the major detail here is that he's standing on the area where John's grave is. Now, this theory falls apart really quickly, because... The idea of death, the personification of the Grim Reaper, would be that, that he is reaping the souls of the living, that he is coming, uh, that he is the natural order of things, that he is going to um, create the natural order where he is going to, he is going to kill people, he's going to take the souls of the people that are, that are meant to die. But, the Grim Reaper would not be, would not be sending somebody out on tasks, morality tasks, to do the right, to do the right thing or the wrong thing. The Grim, Re Grim Reaper is just there to to reap the souls, reap the souls of the living, collect the souls of the living. It's to move people on to death, the next cycle. It's the personification of death, keep the natural cycle of things. And again, the Grim Reaper would not send John out to do tasks like this. He would not send him out to do morality-based missions. Again, his purpose is to reap the souls. So, theory number three, wrong. Okay, theory number four, he is the devil. Now, we are getting closer to the right answer, I believe. Now, this, uh, this theory has a lot of backing, a lot of evidence behind it. Now, we are going to go with Lucifer and Christianity just, for, um, just to make this more simpler. But basically, the idea here is that he is a devil, that he is um, roaming the earth. And, I was, uh, and the, greatest, the greatest pieces of evidence behind this is when he constantly talks, he constantly talks about John's actions, and he talks about the things that he does. And he discusses punishments, as you guys will see right here. He discusses it two times, where people will be punished, and he will be held accountable for his actions. Let's play that right now. I'll let the appropriate authorities judge my morality, friend. Yes, you will. And they shall. Tell me your name, or I won't be responsible for my actions. Oh, but you will. You will be responsible. This is a fine spot. Okay, so as you guys seen right there, he talks about judgments a lot and being held accountable. Um, and where I think this theory additionally starts to fall apart is he sends John out on morality-based missions, morality-based tasks. You know, in the first one, he talks about the man cheating on his wife, and he asks him if he could stop it, if he could do the right thing. In the second one, he tells him, asks him if he could help a nun that's collecting money for the poor, but he also gives the option of robbing a nun, but he doesn't specifically encourage it. And if he was a devil, I would believe he would be encouraging him to do the wrong thing, but he specifically is not encouraging him to do the wrong thing. He gives him the task in the first one, encourages him to do the right thing in the first one in the second one he gives him the task but he also gives the option of doing the wrong thing and he also praises john in another clip here as you guys are about to see and he talks about a son specifically so i think that the devil is just eliminated just by that and the final nail in the coffin on this theory being wrong right now is that he when john shoots him at the end at the end after he says damn you and then he says yes many have but a lot of people will point and say, you know, the devil was cast into eternal damnation by God. But what this, what the strange man seems to say is he says, yes, many have. And, you know, people don't say, tend to just say, damn the devil. They don't, t say, they don't tend to say that. So God was the only one who really damned the devil. So, the, um, so when he says many, many have, he's not, um, he's not, it's, not a reference to, it's not a reference to the devil. Because John was the one who was saying it. And then he says, yes, many have. So that's where I think the theory starts to fall apart. 
Additionally, I was able to look up an interesting fact which does um, does suggest that he is a devil. Uh, I forgot to mention. I actually found out that there was a lot of rumors um, in the in the 18th century. This game takes place in the early 19th century, but there were rumors in the late 18th century that the devil walked the earth in a black suit and a black tall hat. That's based on his cosmetic appearance, but I don't think that that really has any value here because um, the evidence the evidence that I pointed out um, contradicts the theory. So I don't believe he is the devil. Who are you? You know, I admire you, John. I hope my boy turns out just like you. <laughs> For your sake, I hope he don't. You kill people so easily, yet you respect the vows of marriage. That's Here we go, curious. theory number five, the one I believe is correct. Are you guys ready? He is God or some deity. How do I know this? Let's go over all the evidence that we have right now. Now, let's start off. Just look at the tasks that he, he sends John on, such as stopping stopping adultery and helping a nun that's in need of getting money for the poor. Now then, the reason that I believe that he is God in these actions is because God wants John to do the right thing. He wants John to do the right thing. However, he can't make John do the right thing. John has to be willing to do that on his own accord. So he sends John out on these missions right now in order to test him to see if his morality has changed. And I believe that that could be a reference to at the beginning of the game when John gets shot and he gets rescued at Bonnie. It is God's view of him giving a second chance at life to see if he has earned that second chance. But no matter John's bad decisions in the past, they are not going to, um, it is not going to change the outcome that ends up happening to him. Additionally, when he meets the nun and he talks to the nun, he asks the nun, isn't it God's job in order to look over after his own flock? The nun replies, and this is, this is a common religious term, but I found that it was, that, that it was, uh, intriguing here. The nun says, but you know, God has sent you to me. And the second thing is, the donkey appears in two scenes. The donkey appears near the nun, and it appears in Mexico when um, John is talking to him at his camp. And I don't know if it's relevant or not, but the donkey is um, very relevant in the Bible. It's referenced several times in the Bible. And on top of that, at the end, when John says, Damn you! And the... Um, and this mysterious stranger says, yes, many have. I think that is referring to people that damn God or put the, the Lord's name in vain, which could be a reference to the commandments constantly. And um, on top of that, and additionally in this scene where he sympathizes with the girl that Dutch shot, he feels bad for her and he says to John, you know, you've forgotten people way more important than me. In that sense that God is putting other people over himself right now and caring about other people. And on top of that, he's also saying that, you know, John, that you have forgotten about me completely. And in this scene, when he refers to his son. Banditos as soon as he turned up in this country. You're a man who decided right and wrong between a man and death, between a man and his wife. And who are you? You know, I admire you, John. I hope my boy turns out just like you. <laughs> For your sake, I hope he don't. You kill people so easily, yet you respect the vows of marriage. When he references his son, I think that he he's either talking about one or two things. He's either talking about Jesus, but I think that he is prime. He's talking about Lucifer, mainly the fallen angel that betrayed him. And he refers to him as his son. And I think he says, you know, he says, I hope that my boy turns out just like you. But Lucifer doesn't turn out just like that. And Lucifer ends up betraying him. So that's why I think that he wasn't the devil. I think he's God. And I think he's referencing Lucifer as being his fallen, his fallen son. And let's go to the part where he talks about judgments and punishments. I'll let the appropriate authorities judge my morality, friend. Yes, you will. And they shall. Tell me your name or I won't be responsible for my actions. Oh, but you will. You will be responsible. This is a fine spot. See In the around, first Calvary. scene where John says, I'll let the appropriate authorities um, judge me, um, he says, oh, but they will. 
I f that's either referencing that's either referencing to God's judgment or I think it might be referencing to Edgar Ross and the law uh, and the bureau betraying John later and killing him in the story mode at the end I think that's what it might be referencing to and at the end when he says you will be responsible for your actions I think that that's referring to that every single person upon death is going to be responsible for the actions no matter what they do did they can't escape what they've done in the past and additionally a final piece that we have right here Hey, there's a beautiful spot. Sure. What are you doing here? My accounts. I'm an accountant. Is that so? In a way. What's your name? You know, it's the darndest thing. I can't remember. Tell me your damn name and where you know me from. Well, I know you're from Mexico. I know you're from back out west. Hell, I know you from all over. Tell me your name or I won't be responsible for my actions. So if you guys heard that in the final part, he says, I'm an accountant. Meaning, and he's standing on, he's standing on the area where John's grave is going to be on John's ranch. And when he says, I'm an accountant, he is meaning that he manages other people's lives. And in addition to this, when John finally asks him, what is your name? And he says, you know, I don't know. The reason he says, I don't know, is because he has no name, because he is God. God does not really have any other name. He just has a title of God. And and at, and at the end here, when he says, you know, I know you, I know you from back out west. I know you from Mexico. I know you from here. It's referencing that no matter where you are, God is always watching you and God knows you. And what I found the most interesting at the very end here, if you guys watch this part, when John shoots him four times... And he, the first three shots fires, but then the fourth shot jams. I think that that might be a reference to Uncle dying, might be a reference to John dying, might be a reference to his wife dying, and the fourth bullet jamming may be a reference to Jack, his son, surviving. So that was my breakdown on it. It took me literally all night to do this video, and I wanted to do this video because this guy always intrigued me. I had to do a lot of research, had to really study what this guy was saying, had to really watch the cutscenes several times. So I think I figured it out. I think that he is God or I think he is some kind of deity because I think everything that I've seen so far points to that. The other only logical explanation I could see is that he's the devil, but I'm pretty sure that he is God. But for me, I see either he's God or the devil and I see it as 90% that he's God. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I hope you guys have um, enjoyed this breakdown. If you've never played Red Dead Redemption, I suggest you give the game a try, you know. Um, it's, you can get it probably for a decent price right now on Amazon or probably download it from the PlayStation Store or probably rent it as a classic. But um, Red Dead Redemption 2 is coming out next year. If you like the Grand Theft Auto games, you'll definitely like Red Dead Redemption. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this breakdown. I will be doing a review of the Mogul plane a little bit later. So and I'm and I probably will be live streaming tonight. If I don't get to it, I will do it tomorrow, I promise. But I do plan on uploading that Mogul review for GTA. So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think down below. Do you agree with my theories? Do you agree with my breakdown? Do you have your own theories on who this guy might be? What do you think of this guy? Does this guy creep you out? And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.